Well, this trial was conducted by the HIV Prevention Trials Network. Uh, the trial headed by WITS Research Professor Dr. Sinead delaney Moretre, and uh, you heard her in that insert, and she joins us now. Doctor, thank you very much. Uh, congratulations. Just just tell us a bit more about how this was conceptualized, uh, may, made, how, how the trial progressed. Yeah, no, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you. And also, I think it's really important to acknowledge that this is really the reflection of a collective work of many people, both in South Africa and in the region. But we're really delighted um, with the results, which suggest that this uh, injection, if given eight weekly, could prevent HIV infection uh, and could do it more effectively than a daily pill. Why is this only for, for women? So this trial was conducted exclusively in women, and I think it's important to remember that um, more than 59% of new HIV infections in sub-Saharan Africa are in women, and young women in particular uh, are more um, affected, as you heard. But just to kind of reassure you that a similar trial was conducted in cisgender men and transgender women, and they presented their results earlier this year, and we saw very similar effects. So the combined results of these two studies really provides the, um, um, data that can support an application to license this product for use by both men and women. All right, so this is an injection taken once every eight weeks that that can prevent you from becoming HIV um, positive. So, so I, I mean, how important is that for, for the future fight against HIV AIDS on this continent? Well, we think it's very important. I mean, ultimately, what we all want is a vaccine uh, and possibly a cure. But in the interim, what we have known already is that antiretrovirals taken prior to sexual activity can prevent HIV infection, and that's why we've had the oral pill. And what this is is an additional HIV prevention option. And as an injection, it overcomes many of the adherence challenges that are associated with a yeah. pill a day. So for women in particular who struggle with daily pill taking, this is a real game changer for them. And it must be pretty difficult. Uh, so, so if you think about it, you're taking a pill each and every day uh, to prevent getting something that, that you don't have. Uh, who, who has had access to this pill? Um, and you say it's been hard. I mean, what sort of uptake, what sort of adherence has there been to, to the pill, firstly? So ever since uh, the WHO made a broad recommendation about the inclusion of um oral uh, pre-exposure prophylaxis for HIV prevention, what we have seen is the expansion of programs in the region. And in fact, the African continent has the second highest number of people on PrEP. Uh, and so we've seen high uptake, and certainly in South Africa, we've seen the expansion of this program from a few populations to a, a goal to really provide um, PrEP at uh, in every district uh, at a primary health care level. Uh, so there is uh, definitely growing access. Uh, and what we've seen particularly in young women in our studies is that, you know, kind of there's a lot of enthusiasm for the idea of PrEP, but the implementation is very difficult. And some people just find it difficult to take a pill every day. And so having other options that allow them to kind of overcome that problem really mean that we can begin to offer a range of prevention op options that are going to suit different women at different times of their life. Yeah. And, and as you explained, an injection every eight weeks is, is so much easier. So, so again, who, who are the women who would ultimately re receive this? I, I don't know if it's too early to talk about costs. Um, Section 27, for example, saying this is no good unless it's, it's really affordable uh, and it's poor women who are benefiting. Yeah, I mean, this, it's really important to acknowledge that this is the first step in a process uh, and, you know, kind of the process that's followed. And it's an important process that reassures people that these drugs are safe and effective is that uh, regulatory authorities will review the data. They will make recommendations about whether it should be registered in country. And then there are a set of parallel steps, really, to develop guidelines so that these uh, products can be included in HIV prevention programs. And then the Department of Health has has to uh, obviously negotiate price. What we have heard from the drug manufacturer is that they're committed to access and they have uh, other drugs that are part of our uh, antiretroviral program. So I think it's going to be really important for us to watch that space. And it's true to make sure that these products, which could change women's lives, are available to them over the, the coming years. Yeah. 
Could, could you venture a guess? So you say there, there are hurdles uh, still to come, uh, but how long before you believe uh, this will be actually in, in the hands of, of women who feel they need it, who, who want to um, not get HIV AIDS and, and want this tool? Yeah, I think uh, this is going to be a, um, you know, kind of it's going to be over a number of years. It really does depend on sort of the process of licensure in every country. Um, and so, you know, kind of it may it may take a while, but we hope that sort of within the next two to five years we see access. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Research Professor Dr. Sinead Delaney-Moretre.